perfect gluten-free pasta takes a lot of trial and error. Finding the right blend, consistency, and cut can be difficult. I find that most restaurants aren't up to speed on offering an option that is acceptable. That is, until you come across Cafe Bar Pasta in Dundas West. Chef Jay Scape has been making headlines for quite some time now, and now he is delving into new territory and challenging himself by making a house-made gluten-free pasta. Not only is it acceptable, but it's on point for flavor and texture. Can't wait to show you a behind-the-scenes look at the making of gluten-free pasta today. One trait I've always had is to always not necessarily be the smartest guy in the room, but always have all the facts. And as a chef, you, you have to be able to answer every single question with an endless amount of products. Your job as a chef is, one, you know, to produce the best product um, and, you know, to share that knowledge. Um, it, it forces you to be better uh, with how people's eating changes. Whether you're, you're, you're just putting a, a regular carbonara or gluten-free carbonara in front of someone, they're not using any different money to pay for it, so the product has to be able to deliver. So, as a chef, cooking becomes the easy part. Making sure that they have the exact same experience is, is your ultimate goal. I've sat with guests that, that show up and they have celiac and they pull out the card. Yeah. And <clears throat> that, that's a chef's nightmare. You look at it and go, oh, I'm uh, seeing all, yeah. all kinds of things I can't use. Well, I look at that card and go, I'm seeing all kinds of things I can use. In the gluten-free itself is basically four ingredients. We have eggs, salt, corn flour, and then Zantan gum. Now the Zantan gum is a natural ingredient and it's going to help strengthen the pasta. Um, you do everything based on moisture content. For the gluten-free, my moisture is all egg. Yeah, so we're just going to mix this egg up and then get it into our uh, Italia Mini. And we're going to let this mix for a little bit. Cool. We've got good moisture in there right now. Okay. You can see it's, it's clumping up pretty good. So we're going to start the extrusion. Cool. It's going to come out kind of like uh, the Play-Doh Fun Factory. I can see that it's looking nice and tight, nice and smooth. And normally when you do extruded pasta, you dust. So I've got this great product that we found this year, Ontario Cornmeal. Nice little dust like that. It'll just prevent it from sticking. And the best part, the smell, right? Like toasted corn. Toasted corn. So we're gonna do a classic carbonara done with corn guitata. What we're gonna do, uh, we're just gonna slice some pancetta. If you yeah. want, you can use guanciale. We use guanciale at the restaurant as well. I'm gonna quickly saute it. So while that's uh, sizzling away, yeah. I just wanna get it nice and crispy, give a beautiful contrast. I'm okay. gonna drop this into the pasta well behind me. Okay. This will take about four or five minutes. Awesome. Normally when I drop pasta in here, I wanna give it a good stir, but gluten-free. Yeah. It just tends to be a little bit brittle, so I'm just gonna let it cook till it solidifies then, just a touch, and then I'll just gently stir it, make awesome. sure it doesn't stick. What are you doing um, as a kitchen practice to avoid cross-contact risks mm -hmm. for individuals who are intolerant or celiac? Uh, right in behind me, you'll see I have double wells. Yeah. So we take every precaution, okay. and for us, it's just another step. We make everything here. Uh, we do our bread, we do our dessert, we do our pasta. Uh, the joke is, if we could, we'd mill our own flour. <laughs> Especially with an open kitchen, you know, it, it says confidence, hey, come on in, talk to us. Yeah. You don't have to sort of speak through the server. Uh, right in here, we have an equal mixture of Pecorino Romano okay. and Grana Padana Parmesan. Okay. So just one to one, we grate this. And this is the base. I don't do carbonaras on the stove. I don't add any cream. And, and why is that? Just uh... um, I, I think cream is cheating, yeah. right? You're, you're going to get some lovely pasta water out of here yeah. as well, uh, which is going to help temper, and you're going to see it develop as we add it to the point where you think cream's been added. But all we're doing is just triggering the natural umami in the cheeses. Of course, all carbonara, coal miner's pasta, you have to have fresh pepper in there. Awesome. And so this is the base. This is essentially This is it. the base, but there's one thing missing. The egg, the egg yolk. I've got my pancetta. Gonna add that in there. And I don't wanna cook the yolk. I wanna temper the yolk. So. And what does that involve? Just covering it up a little bit for when I hit it with the, uh, the hot water. You don't want it to cook it, you want it to no. be more of a. Just, just below coagulation. And that will help give that creaminess appeal. Mm -hmm. We wanna get that water in there. That's gonna help temper everything. All right? Get the right amount. Yeah. Here we go. And as you can see, everything's starting, yeah. right? Almost as if cream was added. Absolutely. Just keep so in mind it always, <laughs> whether it's gluten-free or normal pasta, always keep tossing it, keep moving it around. You want those flavors triggered, right? You don't want it clumping up on you. 
We've got some lovely gluten-free carbonara. Carbonara. And now for the best part. Wow. That's good. I was never much of a pasta fan until I discovered I couldn't eat gluten anymore. I guess it's true what they say, absence does make the heart grow fonder. 